Hey guys, it's Adrian over BHA here bringing you a new video. Alright, so bear with me guys because I'm using uh, some new video uh, editing software. Uh, just trying something a little bit different. So this video format might be slightly different. Shouldn't be, shouldn't be too far off from what uh, you normally see, but it might look a little bit different. Nonetheless, uh, this video is on Home Assistant Graphs in Chronograph. So as you probably already know, uh, we've done videos on InfluxDB and how to send our Home Assistant data into that database and then display them using pretty graphs in Grafana. But if you're like me and you like to try different stuff all the time and you're looking for something a little different, uh, you may want to check out Chronograph. It's fairly similar to Grafana. Um, it's obviously uh, done by the same people that do InfluxDB, so, so it seems to work a lot better uh, with InfluxDB, and uh, some of the other things that you can do with it are pretty cool. So let's do a, a quick run-through of everything we're going to cover in this video. So, of course, for starters, let's make sure our system is up to date. Every so often I like to do that just to uh, make sure that I'm not getting behind on anything uh, any software that might be causing some bugs and whatnot. Uh, once we do that, we are ready to basically add our chronograph Docker container um, using Docker Compose. Once that is installed and ready to go, then we will log in and configure chronograph. And then lastly, I'm just going to create a couple of graphs, uh, just kind of show you uh, some things that you can do there and how chronograph works. So let's get started. So again, uh, for starters, I like to make sure uh, my system is up to date. I do this, of course, by doing a sudo apt update and a sudo apt upgrade. And depending on how long it's been since I've done my last update, it shouldn't take too long. Uh, once that's done, we're ready to move on to the next step. Once we've got our system up to date, we're going to basically edit our docker compose.yaml file and add in the information needed for the newly created chronograph container. So I'll do a sudo vi docker-compose.yaml. Find me an open spot down here towards the bottom. Just call it chronograph. And I'll go ahead and give it a container name of a chronograph as well. The image uh, we'll be using is also chronograph. I'm going to set the restart to always. Now we are just going to use a Docker volume for this. That's really all we need. So we'll do a uh, I'm going to call mine chronograph underscore data. So under volumes here, we'll have a slash chronograph underscore data. And I'm going to point that to slash var slash lib slash chronograph. Now for ports, we're going to use two ports for uh, chronograph to work properly. Uh, one of those is 10,000. So we'll do a 10,000 colon 10,000. And then the other port that we'll need is 8888. So we'll do 8888 colon 8888. And now we're going to do links because we want this to be able to access information in our influx DB container. So uh, under links, I'm just going to list out influx DB. That is the name of my influx DB Docker container. Once that's done, I'm just going to jump down to the bottom where I list out all the volumes and make sure I add in a line for chronograph underscore data, which is the one that we are using for this container. Once we have all that in there, we're going to go ahead and uh, save it. Then we'll do a sudo docker-compose up-d. Let that go through and create the new container. Once that's done, we'll jump over to Portainer uh, and take a look at that and make sure everything looks good there. So uh, as you can see, I'm in Portainer. We'll click on Chronograph. Everything looks good here. 
I think we are good to go. So let's go ahead and do some minor configuration with chronograph. Again, this is just basically going through the few steps they have at the very beginning when you first install chronograph. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and click on get started. Now for my Influx DB uh, URL, I'm going to change that from localhost to the IP address of my Docker host. So that'll be 10.10.10.8. Under connection name, I'm just going to call it Influx. You can call yours whatever you want. Uh, once that's done, we'll say add connection. Now we'll skip dashboards for now. Well, this now it's talking about capacitor connection. That's if you're installing capacitor. We may look at that at a, in a later video. Uh, I'm not messing with capacitor currently, so we're going to skip through that for now. So as you can see, it shows all the current connections that we have set up. All we have currently is Influx DB, so we are good to go. We are ready to move on to that last step. All right, so uh, as a last step, I just want to show you guys how you can uh, create some dashboards and just show you some of the functionality with Chronograph. Um, it's not too far off from Grafana, uh, but like I said, uh, there are some, there are a few additional uh, things in Chronograph that you might like. Um, we're gonna go over here to Dashboards and click on Create Dashboard. And so it'll come up with a, a blank uh, template here, and we're going to say add data. So for this one, um, I'm going to do network download speed. So at the top where it says untitled graph, I'm going to give it a name. Again, this is just to kind of show you what you can do. Uh, once we do that, we're going to go down to the query section down below, and you'll see a section called Home Assistant. This is all of the data that it is pulling from your Home Assistant database in InfluxDB. So for this graph, we're going to look under Megabits. We'll choose Entity and select Speed Test Download. Then choose Value. I'm going to change the fill to None. And then under value, I'm going to change it from mean to last. And then on the visualization side, I'm going to go ahead and show the legend just so we can have uh, that listed down at the bottom. I'm going to jump back over to the query and where it says last value, I'm going to change that to just say download. We'll say, I uh, see megabits per second. Submit query. And it'll take a little bit to pull in data, especially since we uh, just set this up. We're going to go ahead and save that up at the top here. So you can see the data starting to come in. It's up there in the blue right there in the top corner. We'll give it a little while to come in. Let's go ahead and create a second graph. We're going to do something similar. We're going to do network upload speed. So change the title up here at the top. And then again, we're going to jump down to the query section down below. Uh, choose uh, Home Assistant, megabits per second. We're going to select the speed test upload this time. And again, we're going to change the fill to none. 
and then set the value to last. And we'll go ahead and change the name over here before we do anything else. So we'll change this to upload megabits per second. Visualization, we're going to change the legend to show so that we'll be able to see it. And then we'll go ahead and save that. And as you can see, now we got a graph for our upload speed and a graph for our download speed. Kind of move these over a little bit, make them a little bit bigger. I'm going to change this to. Uh, 24 hours and as you can see the data is coming in now pretty cool there currently they're both the same color let's do an edit on the upload speed we're going to give this one a different color scheme just so they look a little bit different Let's see, underlying colors, I'm just call this one Atlantis. Gives it a nice green color. Go ahead and save that. And now we have a blue graph and a green graph. Everything looks good. That's the end of the video, guys. So again, this is pretty cool. Um, Obviously, it is very similar to Grafana, uh, but again, something different. Uh, if you're looking for something or maybe you don't like all the features in Grafana and you wanted to try out something different, this one will work pretty well with uh, InfluxDB. Give you some nice features there. Now, let's do a quick run through of everything we covered in this video. Uh, so for starters, we, uh, we made sure our system was up to date. Uh, once that was done, uh, we installed chronograph in a docker container using docker compose once we were done with that we configured uh, chronograph and then lastly we just created some graphs just to kind of show you what that looks like in action that's the end of the video guys uh, again i hope you liked the video uh, gave you something uh, different to play around with if you're uh, getting tired of grafana or just looking for a change if you like the video, please subscribe to my channel. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, hit me up in the comments below. And as always, if there are any videos out there that you would like to see that I don't already have out there, let me know in the comments as well, and I will see if I can't get something put together for you guys. Otherwise, I'll see you guys around. Thanks.